Yeah, there are some there are some circumstances in which uh, the uh, physicians or the the system decides that uh, surgery just is not the right option, not just at that time, but kind of ever. Uh, and there are some situations also in which the family decides that it's just not a good idea. Um, I, I think it's important as a surgeon to say to the family, uh, if you decide that you don't want to do this surgery, even though I may think it's an appropriate thing to do, I will stick with you and support you in this uh, decision. And uh, uh, not abandon you because I think m many families feel that uh, if they decline the uh, physician recommendation that they are then outed uh, from the from the system. I think it's important to be to be supportive uh, for, uh, for them. Um, one of the traps in deciding to not do surgery uh, is that over time surgery becomes more difficult in many circumstances. So. Usually surgery is proposed uh, when it is clear that a neuromuscular scoliosis is going to be a problem. Um, it's much uh, medically much more status, status there's much more, um, uh, uh, not just satisfactory, but it's much more successful to do the surgery on a moderate deformity rather than let the full-blown natural history of the deformity become obvious. So if you, if you say at age 13 that, uh, yes, it looks like a bad curve, but it's just not bothering them that much, um, I, I don't want to do anything, let's wait and see what happens. And then if you come back at age 22 uh, and they, uh, there is skin breakdown from the curvature, the child has much more severe uh, respiratory issues, nutrition has become more of an issue, um, there are recurrent pneumonias, that, that becomes a procedure that is very difficult to undertake. So. It's also worth emphasizing that it's fine to say no, and I will support you in the no, but you are making an active decision by choosing to not do a uh, spine fusion. And we've definitely had a, a number of cases over the years where we felt like the, the fragility of the child's health at the time of undergoing surgery uh, was too great to, to keep them safe for the operation. That, that the stress of the operation, anesthesia and everything else, there was, there was in our subjective opinion, um, a high likelihood that the outcome afterwards would, would not be favorable. Um, and that's, that's a really tricky point to try to reach in terms of, of risk-benefit, but we've definitely gotten there with a lot of families. Um, and again, often it, that doesn't happen in, in one conversation. Um, but it's this recurrent discovery, new information sort of rolls in as we're, as we're working up different aspects of, of organ system functioning and things um, that helps us reach that decision. Um, but as Dr. Emmons said, it's a, it's a difficult one to make because the, you know, if the, if the scoliosis curve itself is progressing and getting worse over time, you may have this window where you feel like this is the most opportune time to operate. Um, but if the child's health and and fragility is not stable enough to meet that window, um, then maybe it's best not to pursue it. I, I would say I really appreciate what Dr. Emmons says about when a family makes a decision not to move forward, sticking by that family and being able to support them and provide whatever supports are gonna help that individual be comfortable and maximize um, their quality of life with, with the severe scoliosis. Um, I've had friends who've made the decision not to have surgery, and um, thankfully they've had people around them that have tied them into um, palliative care, 